And so I take him back. Usually, this is when I talk about salvation. And back up with me to Romans chapter 10, because this is the Romans road. And this is when I asked them, I said, now, how did you come to Christ? Because, by the way, everything in discipleship does not work if they're not saved. It's kind of like typing onto a computer that the battery's dead or that has no power cord. It, uh, you can type all day. You can just keyboard all you want. Nothing is happening if it's not connected to the power source. Salvation is when we're connected to God, and he doesn't leave. He is the power source. He is there, and he responds to his word. The, co the code, the command, the, the way that God responds is through his word. That's, that's the the software of our lives. It's the Word of God, and the power of God brings to pass the programs that are in the Word of God. It's amazing what he does. But we start talking about salvation. I say, when did you get saved? And most people will tell you something. Well, I was at a meeting, or I heard the gospel, or someone at work, and I resisted a long time, or my parents, or I always thought I was a Christian, but finally one day I was standing there, and wow, I became convicted of my sin. I cried out to Christ, and 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 I'm saved. I say, that's wonderful. Now let's look at how completely your salvation is tied to God's Word. And so I say, have you ever heard the Romans Road? And you know, the Romans Road is the simplest little way to lead someone to Christ. In Romans 3, all have sinned, and the wages of sin is death, and Christ died for the ungodly. And so this is the fourth step right there. In verse 9, actually, in chapter 10, verse 9, confess with your mouth. Ask Jesus to save you. Do you know why many people never lead anyone to the Lord? They never look him in the eye and say, what would keep you from right now? Right now. Crying out to Christ. Telling him. I mean, out loud, I'd love to hear it. Tell him, you know you're a sinner. They go, oh, I don't know that. Well, they're not ready to be saved. If they don't know they're a sinner. See, that's why you, you go over the Romans road, and so I, I say, this is a fourth step. Ask Jesus to save you. When did you do that? And I'll hear their, their testimony. Um, and I say, look what it says. You confess and believe your heart. God raised him from the dead. How do you know Jesus rose from the dead? See, this is what they're going to get hit with in school, in college, at work. How do you know Jesus rose from the dead? Do you know how I know Jesus rose from the dead? Primarily because the Bible says so, and I believe God. I wasn't there. Now, secondarily, I know because he lives within my heart. But before I was saved, how did I believe in the truth of the resurrection? Because I read all these evidences that demand a verdict? No, because I had to come down. I mean, those are all vital, but what I had to come to is believing God. And how do I know what to believe about God? Because there's so many voices in the world. This is the Word of God. So keep, keep reading through the plan of salvation. Verse 13, whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all of a sudden, I have to say, wait a minute, which Lord do I call on, and who are we talking about? Now, look down at verse 17. And see, this is, this is so critical to get to with a person you're discipling them. You've already established that the way you get saved is the way you live the rest of life. So you've got to reestablish how they got saved. And you just, this first meeting is so, going over the plan of salvation, many of them, I actually marked the whole Romans road. I've even led people to Christ who came to be discipled. Did you know people do that? People call the office, they say, I would like to meet, I want to just, you know, understand more about living the Christian life. And so I say, let's talk about the Christian life, and we talk about as you receive, you walk, and then we sit there and I say, let's go through the Romans road. And usually about one or two steps down the Romans road, they'll say, you know, that, I, that's never happened to me. I said, what can happen today? See, you can actually lead people, Lord, in discipleship. It's, it's wonderful. When they come and say they want something, they want something. Some of them don't even know what they want, and we introduce them to Christ. But once they know Christ, look what it says in verse 17. This is how we got saved. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, on the screen, I put it up for you. You call in the name of the Lord, you're saved, but, but how do you do that? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. It's very important to reaffirm in people's minds that the only way that I know 
that I am forgiven, that I have salvation, is not because I feel something or I did something or someone just lavishly assured me that not to worry, that I have been born again because I have heard the word from God. He is the author of the gospel, and it's in this book, and it's not apart from this book. It isn't like you could find God anywhere out there. No, they all indirect, you know, the, the general revelation points to the inspired revelation. People are saved by hearing the Word of God. They don't have to hold a great big family Bible, but they need to hear God's Word, not my stories. And, and we can all, it's wonderful to package the gospel in a nice frame. But if you never get to the power of the gospel, which is the Word of God and the truth of what Christ did, recorded in the Word of God, they can't be saved. So I began to talk to them. And we're saved by hearing and responding to the truth of God's Word. And the gospel flows only from God's Word and from nowhere else. And only by believing the gospel contained in God's Word, the Bible, can a person be saved. And I even explained that to them. 